In this video, we're going to have some fun with some interesting 2D physics components. They're called effectors and they can actually be really useful. We'll have a look at the area effector, the surface effector, the point effector, the buoyancy effector and the platform effector. Also, I'm sorry I missed the video last Wednesday. I caught a cold and yeah, it was bad, <laughs> but I'm over it. So let's get into it. So in this scene, I have a background sky, a ground with a 2D box collider and an asteroid. The sprites that I'm using are made by Unity and are available for free on the asset store. There will be a link in the description. So first, let's go ahead and add a new circle collider to our asteroid. Let's focus on it and let's decrease the radius so it matches. Let's also go ahead and add a rigid body 2D in order to apply physics to our object. So now when we hit play, we should see it fall to the ground. Cool. The first component I want to have a look at is the surface effector. If we go ahead and select our ground, hit add component and add the surface effector 2D. In order to use this, we'll have to mark our collider as used by effector. So what this component will now do is apply a force along the surface of the collider in order to match a specified speed. Think of the way a conveyor belt works at the airport. So if we hit play now, we should see that as soon as our ball hits the surface, a force does indeed get applied and it slowly rolls along the surface. We can decrease the speed here and actually make it go the other way. We can also change the force scale. This is the amount of force that we are going to add to our object in order to try and achieve the desired speed. So if we set our speed to say 5 and bump up our force scale to 1, we should see that our ball immediately accelerates. However, if we set our force scale to something smaller, say 0.01, we can see that it slowly increases in speed. The speed variation allows us to add a random increase in speed. We can also make this negative. Remember, you can always control the collider's this component effects. You do that by simply disabling a layer from the collider mask. Say if we didn't want this to affect water, we would disable water. And this is true to pretty much all of the effectors. Finally, under options, we have the possibility of using contact force. This means that the force will be applied at the point of contact instead of at the center of the collider. So if we enable this, we should see that it very quickly rotates. And that's because the point of contact is always at the bottom of our sphere. And so it's going to add torque because we are pushing at the bottom of our sphere. And so it will start to rotate around its center. I'm just going to disable this for now. And at the very bottom here, you have two toggles. These are in multiple of the effects vectors and they simply allow you to enable or disable friction and bounce from the physics material sitting on this object. So next up is the area effector. If you go ahead and right click, hit create empty, let's reset the transform on this object and call it something like force field. We then add a new component. The component we need is a box collider 2D. This is required by the area effector. We'll then add the area effector itself. Again, we'll have to check use by effector. And for this component, we also want to mark the collider as a trigger. So the area effector applies forces within a certain area. And our area is defined by the size of our collider. So if we go in here and say scale up this component a bit, and we can maybe also move it over to the right here, we should now see that whenever our asteroid enters this field, it's going to apply a force in the right direction, and it's going to do so with a magnitude of 10. So if we hit play and see our asteroid fall to the ground, we should see it speed up as soon as it gets to our area effector. It did, but it wasn't too visible. We can go ahead and up the magnitude, let's set it to 30, and we can also add an angle. Say if we wanted this area effector to have the ball shoot upwards, well then we would go ahead and add a force angle of 90 degrees. Because if we move 90 degrees around the Z axis, it's going to shoot up. So if we now hit play and wait for a meteor to enter the force field, we can see that it gets shot up into the air. This angle is currently relative to the orientation of our object. So if we go ahead and rotate our force field along the Z axis, we should see that the direction in which our asteroid gets shot does also change. If this is not what we want, we check use global angle. And so it will always get shot upwards. The area effector also allows us to add some variation to our force and choose where we want to apply our force. If it's set to rigid body, it's going to apply it at the center of mass of our rigid body 2D. And if we set it to collider, it's going to apply force to the current position of our collider. In our case, that should mean the same because we are dealing with a totally circular object, but for more complex objects, that might make a difference. Finally, we can also apply damping to our rigid body, or in other words, we can apply linear air resistance or rotational air resistance. Resistance. I very rarely find a use case for this. Next up is my personal favorite. It's the point effector. The point effector applies forces to either attract or repulse against a certain point. Note that I've set the gravity of our asteroid to zero so that it's just going to hang around in empty space. In order to add a point effector, we're actually going to have to add yet another collider to this object. Yes, you can have more than one circle collider on an object. So we'll add a circle collider 2D and this one we're going to bump up 
up the radius quite a bit. That's because the radius here determines whether or not a nearby object is going to be affected by our point effector. So let's make the reach of this fairly big. We can then mark this as trigger and as used by effector. Let's then add a component and this is of course going to be the point effector. Now the force magnitude is of course the amount of force that we want to apply and this is negative if you want it to attract and positive if you want it to repulse. If we go ahead and duplicate this asteroid now and move it over here and hit play we should see that the two very quickly clash together. However the force that is being applied is currently constant meaning that as long as these two objects are within reach of each other we'll apply a constant force with a magnitude of 10 to each asteroid in the direction of the other asteroid. This is fine for in many cases but when it comes to gravitational attraction as is the case between these two asteroids our good friend Newton actually stated that the force being applied to these is proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. We call this law the law of universal gravitation and the relation between force and distance we call that inverse squared. So if we want fairly realistic gravitational simulation that is what we would use. So if I go ahead and apply that to both our objects here we should see that the closer they get to each other the quicker they will accelerate. We can then grab any of these asteroids here and you can see that it's really quick and fun to play around with. We can also duplicate one of them to introduce even more into the scene here and you can see how quickly you can get fairly realistic gravitational movement and it's really easy to go in here and tweak different parameters. You could go in here and bump up the mass on one of these objects but that is actually not going to have any effect on the force being applied. So what you could do is increase the force magnitude together with the mass of the different objects and that would mean that the more heavy objects applied a greater attractional force to the other objects as stated by Newton's law. But if you want to learn more about this sort of stuff I suggest you check out my video on forces where we go a lot more in depth. So I just quickly covered it around the asteroids a bunch of times and I also made this ball here which is the exact same thing except it has a positive force magnitude. Now when we hit play we should see some of the objects here stick together and some of them are repelled by the ball. Then we have the buoyancy effector 2D and probably the most common use case for this is water or other kinds of fluids and it basically gives you a bunch of options to determine how an object will float on top of a surface. So in my case here I went ahead and created this uh, water sprite in Photoshop and I added a box collider 2D to it. Again we also have the asteroid here with a circle collider and a rigid body and right now when we hit play our asteroid simply lands on the water and it doesn't look super good. To change that let's go to our water and let's go ahead and add a new component. We want to add the buoyancy effector 2D. We also want to mark our collider as trigger and as used by effector. And now right off the bat when we hit play it's actually going to look a whole lot better. The two primary things that you want to adjust here is the surface level. This is just the surface location of the buoyancy fluid. So if we go ahead and subtract a bit from this you can see that our object will find rest at a lower point. For example in this case I think it works a lot better if our surface level is actually a bit deeper. And then we have the density of our fluid. And without getting into a deep explanation of Newtonian fluids and fluid mechanics I will say that the more dense a fluid the easier it's going to be for objects to float on top. You can see this as I raise the density of our fluid our asteroid will be pushed to the top and as I decrease it it will actually start sinking. You can also see what happens if we have a very sudden shift in density. The forces that are being applied are going to be so great that our asteroid will be shut upwards. Finally our buoyancy effector also allows us to adjust damping as we've seen before and even add flow along our surface. This works in pretty much the exact same way as our area effector. We have a magnitude which we can also use to control direction, an angle and a flow variation. The final thing that I want to cover in this video is the platform effector. This component applies various platform like behavior. The most important one is probably one-way collisions. I've set up this example here where we have our asteroid sitting at ground level. Right on top of that we have a force field is going to apply an upwards force making it jump upwards and we have a platform with a box collider 2D. So right now we hit play and our asteroid gets shut up and it's going to hit the platform and it's not really going to get anywhere. But a very common thing that you want to do in platformer games is give characters the possibility of jumping on top of platforms by first going through them and then landing on them. And this is what we refer to as one-way collision. To add this we simply go in here add the platform effector 2D. We then want to check used by effector not as trigger this time and make sure that under the settings under one way it says use one way. Now when we hit play 
our asteroid should shoot right through the platform and land on top of it. If we go into the scene view, we can also see that we now have this arc on top of our platform. This is adjusted using the surface arc, and this arc basically just defines the surface that doesn't allow colliders to pass, meaning that anything outside of the arc is considered for one-way collision. In most cases, this is just going to be 180. You can also use the rotational offset in case you want to flip things around. If we set this to 180 now, take our asteroid here and drag him up and have him fall down you can see that it now works in the opposite way and finally under sides here we can adjust whether or not we want to use side friction and side bounce this means that if we have some kind of physics material applied to our platform say we wanted to make this platform bouncy we can choose whether or not we want that to take effect when we hit the sides of the platform so let's go in here and create a physics material and let's call this one bouncy we can set the friction to 0.4 that's fine and the bounciness to 1 then under our platform let's go and do box collapse 2d and drag in our bouncy material we should now see that when we hit play our platform is indeed bouncy but since use side bounce is currently turned off if we just disable use one way here let's rotate the platform 90 degrees around the z and let's also move up our asteroid we shouldn't actually see it bouncing and indeed it does not so use this component wisely it can definitely help you get around a lot of the annoying control stuff when making a quick 2d platformer so that's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video thanks to all of the awesome patreon supporters who donated in april and a special thanks to derek heemskirk faisal marify james Callahan, cypark mommy cole cabral and jason the tito if you want to become a patron yourself you can do so at patreon.com slash brackies 